There I was, a cold stormy night. I had just built my PC, there was nothing it couldn't edit, I thought. But then I bought the perfect camera. All of a sudden I struggled, I cried, I whimpered. Then a company reaches out saying, we have a Mac mini killer, I'll kill you if you don't review it. That's what happened. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So Geekcom reaches out to me. I didn't even know this world existed until I saw the Mac Mini and I was like, okay, whatever, but that's a Mac. You have to switch into that. And I'm a Windows guy my whole life. I can't just rewrite my brain. Yes, this is a sponsored shill tuber review. They sent it to me for free, but I put it through its paces to see, can it edit these Canon R5 II files? Cause my computer struggles. And if this can play them, I'll switch right over to it. Look how tiny it is compared to mine. It's freaking machined aluminum over here. It's metal glorious. So first let me show you around the body and then we talk about what I like and what I don't like so much. So beautiful metal body, tons of USB ports and fast ones, like way faster than mine even. There's five USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. In the back, there's two USB 4s and a little dinky USB 2 for your mouse. Wow two HDMI's, apparently you can power four monitors out of this. Two in the HDMI, two in the USB, and also an SD card slot built right in, which is super speedy. Here's a little display of that test. Copying straight from this SD card reader blazed up almost 300 megabits per second. And then when I plugged in a very good SD card reader into the USB 4 point, it was slower. So like this is a fantastic SD card. I wish there was a, also a CF Express card, type B and A, and that might've made the body a little bigger. You can take it apart, you can upgrade it, you can add RAM, SSDs, like it's not like a Mac where you're stuck, proprietary stuff, you just take stuff off. No, I don't know how to do it. Sick up to 64 gigs of RAM, I tried to sneak in that. They gave me the 32, I was like, I'll review it if it's the 64 gig. They shot that down pretty hard. But it's DDR5, 5600, megahertz per second. Well, wow. we got a two terabyte SSD in there and you can add more just for such a tiny thing. Like on paper, it sounds too good to be true. My initial concern is that it's gonna get hot. It's tiny. Like you can't just cram a giant PC into a little box and say, yeah, we'll perform just as good. But it has Ice Blast 2.0 cooling system. So how could anything be hot? It's got Ice Blast blasting arctic air at it so it's fine that the fan gets a little loud at times it's quite quiet if you're idle here's a little sound of it so what you're listening to right now is at idle i'm going to open up davinci resolve you're going to hear it start ramping up we're playing like 4k raw files and then it gets quite noisy but that's just while you're editing and rendering of course or doing anything interesting it's loud it's loud it's a, like a machine gun but it's not, like it's just a fan noise. I always have fans running in here. Stop it. Okay, so first baseline test. This is my computer, a 5900X with the 7900XTX. And I'm trying to play Canon's 4K S RAW file. Just 24 frames per second, it's a nightmare. 100% CPU. My GPU is just not decoding anything, I think. That's why, so I'm getting like, it says 33 frames per second, but it's choppy and it's not fun to edit. So I have to play it at half resolution. When it comes to the 8K60 raw file, same thing, 100% CPU panic and GPU barely contributing. It's choppy, it's not great. This is on a like a well-built PC with some like mostly new specs it's like quite high end. So if this little geek comp thing chugs through these files with no problems, I'll panic and be sad, but also happy that I have a new tinier machine that's even better. And it's not better. It's so like what we're seeing is the GPU is now the bottleneck. It's panicking at 100%, whereas the CPU's trying to keep up. It's not doing a whole heck of a lot. This is the 4K S raw. They're hard files, man. Like even my PC can't play them. And this is like no better. I was hoping in the 8K60 raw, same thing. 
it's just, it's slower than my PC is, and it's trying, it's really trying. But like when you lower the resolution to half, it plays smooth. And the fact that you can actually edit these files on this tiny machine, it's cool. I was just hoping that I was gonna see some miracle. Like, oh, you wouldn't believe the decoding in this thing. It plays anything. So I was able to edit the whole video. Everything was smooth and easy, just like it would be on any other machine. Just playing it at half resolution took me like four minutes to edit an entire video. So I'm like, yeah, man, geek calm for the win. You can do it. You totally can. But even the Canon C70 4K RAW, which my computer plays just fine, like zero issues whatsoever, it was kind of choppy. The CF Express B card transferred quicker on the Geekcom. Better USB 4 port? Anyone? Look at how much time I saved on that file. I could write a book in that time. Thank you, Geekcom. When it comes to rendering your video, that's usually where even the Mac Mini struggles because it's GPU intensive and it just doesn't have the horsepower. It's smooth timeline playback, but when you're rendering, it's like that will take longer. So. On my computer with these raw files, it struggles pretty hard and the Geekcom struggles even more because it's tiny and cute and doesn't want to work. But it works, it just takes roughly double the time of my PC. So I honestly thought when they offered me this computer, I was like, I think it'll do better than my computer with newer Intel chips and it'll probably outperform it and you'll look really good. So I'm sorry that you don't look as good as I was hoping you would, but it's a good little capable PC, tiny, it's tiny and cute. You saw how cute it was. Okay, I looked up the hardest game and apparently this one is hardest for computers to play. So, okay, just don't get hit by the balls. Oh, okay, that's frustrating. Run for it, diagonal, I bet you there's a, no, easy. Oh God, I panicked. Can barely even hear the geekum even trying to play it, no fans coming on, it's laughing at how easy this is. Oh, Geekum technology. Oh God, the ray tracing on that one, did you see it? So in the mini PC world, I think Geekcom has established themselves now. Good price, good performance, not bad at all. Totally, I could recommend them. First, a Mac Mini, I have to imagine the Mac Mini outperforms this, but at like five times the cost, so is that worth it? Uh, and then proprietary upgrades to the SSD and RAM. It's like, whoa, that costed a lot. So, eee. but if it's Geekcom versus other PC makers, what are we even doing here in Geekcom? Come on, the price to performance ratio unmatched. They paid me to say that. One thing I did notice, I don't know if it'll show up here, but the screen was very different looking when I plugged my monitor into the Geekcom. It was so contrasty and I just, I don't know how to change it. Usually you look into the graphics card manager and you can like turn off whatever effects they're doing. I could not for the life of me. So it was quite just unusable to edit videos. There's probably a fix. I just don't know what it is and I ain't got no time for that. If it was me building like a Mark II, I would somehow want even more USB ports. Don't even know what I would do with them, but add more. HDMI is not my favorite. Give me at least the DP one. I don't even know what they're called, but that's what my monitor was using. I have like janky cords that they kept turning off and it's like, I hate HDMI so much, but whatever it has USB for, my monitor can't even do that. All I would really want is either the graphics card to actually decode these super hard to edit files. I don't know what is needed for that, but something, I don't mind if it would be a little bigger. Imagine if it was twice the size, but it had something in there and Noctua fans to be silent. Whoa, like it doesn't have to be this big. So my conclusions are for the cost, it is a very capable seeming machine. You saw me play that world's hardest game. That was, that was intense. You'll be able to edit most files, I imagine, with very little trouble. You might have to play at half resolution. You should be fine. It's not gonna blow you away like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm editing 16K, 120 frames per second files. You're probably not going to. You could at quarter resolution. It does make me curious, because I do like having that tiny thing on my desk that frees up a lot of real estate, although it looks all nice and shiny 
alone. But then when you start plugging things in, it's like, okay, that looks a little ghetto. I'm sure you could wire it in a way, cable manage your way through life. But like, it's not quite as nice as it looks like on the screen. But it makes me curious to see what would a Mac 4 Mini do? Because then if it could edit these files with no problem, then I'll switch my whole life into it. I don't care, instead of Reason, I'm using Logic Pro. I would switch to Final Cut instead of DaVinci, even though you could use it just all Mac all the time, get an iPhone, but that's probably not gonna happen. So thank you so much for watching. And what do you think? Have you ever tried a Geekcom? They're available through my affiliate links. I don't think I even make money because usually these companies give you their own link and it's like, okay, whatever. I don't know if there's discount codes and stuff, but it's a pretty good deal for that thing. Not bad. Some people might like that thing. I'll leave now after Bitcoin gets donated. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for my website.